What's up everyone? Today I quite simply want to show you some of my recent pickups that you haven't seen yet. It is summer but these are not necessarily summer pieces. I'm always on the lookout for quality things or good deals no matter what time of the year it is. And I did manage to get a lot of these at a bargain price but some of them were also gifted to me. I'm very lucky to receive a lot of offers for free clothing but I only ever accept things that I actually like and things that I think you guys would be interested in. So with that being said, I'll leave links to everything I'm wearing down in the description box below. And for reference, I'm five foot 10, around 140 pounds, and I typically wear a 28 to 29 inch waist. I always like to start on feet with these kinds of videos and work my way up the body, so let's do that. First up are these stunning tassel loafers from Solivare that they kindly sent over to me. Those who have been with the channel for a while will know my love for Solivare and how I replaced my Doc Martens boots with a pair of Solivares instead. Now I do have some Doc Martens tassel loafers already, but these Solivares aren't going to replace them, they're going to fit in alongside them. The sand coloured suede and curved design gives off a totally different look to the black leather Doc Martens loafers I have. These kind of remind me of the Clark's Wallabies, which I've pretty much had to retire because the gum sole has been destroyed. Thankfully, these Solivares have that super chunky and durable sole that won't give up on you anytime soon. And if it did, well, the loafers are constructed with a good year welt, so they're easily replaced. Also, being made in England of high quality leather, these just scream quality. If you're looking to get a pair, I'd say go down half a size with these because they do run a little bit big. Overall, I just love the versatility of these loafers. I wear them with jeans, smart trousers, or even shorts. The quality you're getting for the price you're paying, which is cheaper than the Doc Martens equivalent, makes them a bit of a steal as well. All right, next up, definitely not much of a warm weather piece. I got the Wrangler 13 MWZs, otherwise known as the cowboy cut jeans. I've been eyeing a pair of these up for ages and they finally came up in the size and color I wanted. And at an absolute bargain price of five pounds from eBay, so I just couldn't resist. My style evolution over the past few years has definitely leaned heavily towards Western. And having recently received some incredible cowboy boots from Chiso's, I knew it was only a matter of time before I got the Wrangler cowboy cuts. I picked them up in a size 30 waist and 30 leg. They're a little bit bigger than I would have liked around the waist, but they're absolutely fine. They're not falling off or anything. They're a higher rise, so they do sit right up on the waist, which is ideal for me when I wear shorter length tops. I think a lot of people prefer to get these in a longer length leg so that they get stuck in around the ankle but I'm not really into that look. So the 30 leg suits me just fine. You might think that being cowboy jeans, it would mean that they have a wide boot cut at the ankle, but that's not the case at all. It's actually a very slight widening, just perfect for slipping on some cowboy boots or regular boots underneath. As you can see, I got them in this sort of washed out gray color. Not traditional, but I already have blue jeans, so I wanted these to be different. These are just a timeless classic, and I'm sure I'm gonna be wearing them for many years to come. Next up, these are probably the things I'm most excited about. As you may or may not know, apart from Western, I've been getting really into true vintage clothing from like the 40s up to the 70s. And with that, I've become obsessed with these random sports or college tees. Like this one here, the Kansas State Open tennis tournament t-shirt printed on a 70s or 80s wrestle. I think there's a bit of a stigma around wearing t-shirts from teams or sporting events that you never took part in, but I honestly don't care. I just buy and wear things because I like the look of them and I feel good in them. I love the janky lettering and the natural fade and distressing it's gone through over the last 40 to 50 years. The second one I have is this super faded yellow South Pacific t-shirt again printed on a 70s or 80s Made in USA Russell. It's gone super thin over the years, the logo clearly hand-drawn and then printed on, and it has this incredible lived-in feel that you just can't replicate with new clothes. I really like the fit of these older t-shirts as well, they're right up my street, being a bit tighter and shorter than most modern tees. I also love these sort of reinforced collars that you find on older t-shirts. That's probably not the correct name for them, but you can tell they're good because it's the kind of collar they use on high quality Japanese reproductions. If you live in the USA, then you probably see these kinds of t-shirts everywhere in the thrift. You should count yourself really lucky because they're very difficult to get hold of in the UK. So if any of my American viewers have a bunch of these they don't want, feel free to send them my way. All right, let's stay on t-shirts for a second because I have an absolute hidden gem next. Well, they're a hidden gem for me anyway. Some of you might've already heard of them, 
the brand called Alaval. I think that's how you pronounce it anyway. It's either Alaval or Olaval. I'm gonna go with Alaval. This is their heavy duty crew neck t-shirt in white but it's more of an off-white. This was sent over to me by Clutch Cafe. I guess they saw my enthusiasm for white t-shirts. I'll never get bored of trying to find the best white t-shirts and I can honestly say this is one of the top contenders so far. I have no hesitation putting it right up there with the Real McCoy's athletic t-shirt that I love so much. Alaval are a London-based brand, but this t-shirt was made in Japan. It's made from a 14 count American cotton yarn giving it an insanely smooth feel. It's then constructed using a Taimaru knitting machine. I'm not familiar with these, but I'm guessing they're a circular knit machine because this t-shirt has no side seams. Similar to Loop Wheel, this gives it that form-fitting shape that conforms to your body. I picked it up in a size small and I'm delighted with how it fits. It's certainly heavyweight and thick, and it has quite a short and boxy shape. They describe it as a 50s slash 60s sportswear fit. And as you saw with the last t-shirts, that's exactly my bag at the moment. It also has that same collar, which they call a bound collar with triple stitching. So that must be the proper name for it. All of this for 60 pounds seems like a bit of a steal. If this was priced at like 75 pounds or even 90 pounds, I wouldn't have been surprised at all. They have a whole range of other stuff as well, which looks super promising. So I might have to get more of their stuff to share with you in the future. Next up, I've got two button-up shirts to show you from Bather. You may remember them if you watched my shorts video recently. I showed off their beautiful Japanese twill leisure shorts. But today, first up, I have their Dobby leisure shirt, which they sent over in a size small. This thing has been an absolute staple for me in the heat so far this summer. It's got this really subtle stripe pattern design, which just goes with anything. And it's made in Canada from a really lightweight Japanese cotton and viscose blend. It truly is super lightweight. And when you combine that with the relaxed airy fit, you can easily wear this all day in the heat. They have a few leisure shirts in different colors and materials including hemp, which I can imagine would be even cooler in the sun. The next shirt is a proper summer banger. It's the Papaya Tribute Camp shirt, again in a size small. You can for sure go out and find a vintage Hawaiian shirt, but if you don't want to mess around with sizing or condition, then this one's for you. It has the perfect aloha design with the palm trees, pineapples, the guy surfing and playing guitar, the girls dancing, and it's printed in this faded out color that isn't too loud like some other Aloha shirts. It also has the camp collar, which makes it ideal for wearing open and casual. I'm also glad that it's not too oversized. I found with a lot of my vintage Hawaiian shirts, they turn out huge. This one is very regular fitting. Like all their stuff, it's just made super well out of luxury materials with a classic design. All right, last up, we're going back to something Western inspired and it's the Real McCoy's Sawtooth Western denim shirt. This one has been in my wish list for absolutely ages, but I never felt like pulling the trigger at full price. And then it popped up on eBay for a measly 30 pounds. So I had to just go for it. It's a no regrets purchase at that price. The Real McCoy's are of course known for reproducing vintage Americana at insanely high levels of quality and this shirt is no different. Made in Japan from a 10 ounce cotton denim, it features tons of details that are true to the original 60s version, worn by Marlon Brando and others. For example, the sawtooth chest pockets, which give it a really distinctive appearance, as well as the Western yoke and exaggerated pointy collar. One of my favorite details are the pearl snap buttons, they're just beautiful to look at and really catch for light. I went for a size 15, which refers to the neck size, a very formal way of sizing shirts these days. Size 15 pretty much equates to a small and this fits nice and snug without being uncomfortable. There's no room for anything underneath and that was my intention. I have no plans to wear this open. For me, it's to be worn done up and tucked in. And it's designed that way. That's why the length is so long so that when it's tucked in, it doesn't easily become untucked. This will of course see more action in the fall and winter, but I'm just so delighted to finally have it in my collection and I can't wait to start styling it. So there's a few of my recent pickups. Well, I say recent, but I've collected these over the past few months. I just haven't been able to fit them into any other video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if so, I'll probably do a few of these a year just to show off things that wouldn't otherwise be shown. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Sarah.